The year is 1915, a year ago the First World War embroiled Europe in a state of bloodshed and now the Ottoman Empire has entered the war on the side of the central powers. However, this led to the collapse of the Ottoman Empire and the events of the Arab revolts which eventually led to the Turkish War of Independence and the abolishment of the Ottoman Caliphate. However, what if instead of joining the Central Powers, the Ottoman Empire entered the Entente Powers, France, Britain and Russia? What would happen had the Ottoman Empire been on the winning side of the First World War? The first question we have to ask ourselves though is why did the Ottoman Empire even decide to join the Central Powers in the first place? They joined it because they were quite unstable, had quite a ton of revolts, civil strife, you know the deal and they thought that if they win then they're gonna have some extra stability and that's gonna help them save the Empire. It didn't work that way. In this timeline, the triumvirate of Talat Pasha, Enver Pasha and Jamal Pasha, they will decide to join the Entente instead of the Central Powers. And let's be clear here, they're gonna win and survive into the 1920s. But how exactly? The first step for the Ottomans to take in this war will be Bulgaria. Bulgaria might not even join the war if the Ottomans are in the Entente, so we will assume that the Ottomans strike a preemptive attack against the Bulgarians. The Ottomans will be able to take Western Thrace again, not all of it because Greece will also join the war and take some of it and the rest of Bulgaria will go under untanned military occupation. This will greatly strengthen the Serbian army because now they don't have to fight a two front war and might be able to survive way longer. The battle of Gallipoli and the other battles between the Ottomans and the Entente won't happen which will mean less casualties which means that the whole front against against Austria-Hungary in the south will be way stronger. In fact, I would even say that we might see offensives into Austro-Hungarian territory. On top of that, Russia might be way stronger in this timeline since they don't have to fight the Ottomans in the south and can focus completely on Austria-Hungary and the Germans. Germany might lose a bit faster in this timeline, so to say. Now the Ottomans would have theoretically won the war, but this is not the end of their troubles. Russia would fall into a revolution and a civil war just like in our timeline, which might might lead to some op Ottoman opportunism when it comes to the Caucasus, which will lead to some sort of second Crimean war basically, which would become a stalemate between the Soviets and the Ottomans fighting for the Caucasus and the nearby regions and most likely no one would come out on top but the Ottomans would be able to seize some parts of the Caucasus. Now after this long bloody prolonged war the Ottoman Empire will finally be able to enter an area of peace and possibly new reforms. The debts of the Ottomans to the Western powers would be forgotten by the Entente because of uh, the Ottomans joining the war and on top of that the Ottomans might get Western money subsidies which would boost the Turkish economy. Now what would also happen is that uh, the Ottoman Empire would probably get a new constitution which would be more democratic, uh, give voting rights to people and generally secularize Turkey more and uh, this would be met with uh, Arab resistance, however without uh, the support of the British they wouldn't really be able to launch a successful revolt anytime soon. Now the Ottoman Empire would finally be reformed and ready to enter into a new age. This new age would begin with the rise of the new Axis powers in Germany and Italy who would grow close to the Ottomans as the Ottomans seek to take even more new lands. Operation Barbarossa due to the Soviets being tired from the second Crimean war would be way more successful and the Ottomans would probably support the Germans against the Soviets. This will lead to a successful battle of Stalingrad and a collapse of the Soviet Union in Europe. This will lead the British, the USA and Germany to sign a treaty because D-Day just isn't going to happen in this timeline and that will basically lead to Germany winning World War II in a very weird fashion. From this war the Ottomans would be able to get new subjects in old Soviet lands for example Dagestan, Chechnya and a possible Turkestani state all being subject to the Sultan. As a consequence of the treaty which we will call the Treaty of Amsterdam the Ottomans will get full control of the Middle East and some kind of Egyptian subject. Now, now a new cold war will begin between some sort of NATO, a new resurgent China 
and Germany and all of them will need oil which will be discovered in Ottoman lands making the Ottomans very rich from all of this oil. With the political instability seen in Iran in the 1970s in this timeline the Ottomans will probably be able to invade Iran or make an Iranian subject in some way they would be able to annex some uh, Iranian lands and become bigger. The USA would inevitably win the Cold War and this would lead to decolonization and from this decolonization the Ottomans might be able to get even more subjects. Now the Ottomans would enter into the 21st century with an uncertain future as Arab elements might be launching a revolt very soon as they are becoming even more powerful. However, for the end of the video, we will assume that the Ottomans survive into the 21st century as a new prosperous empire. This video took a really long time to make, so go and subscribe, go and subscribe, 